Hi, this is Greg Potterbaum, and uh, I want to thank everybody for joining today. We'll give it just a couple more minutes for some more people to come on, and then we'll get started. Give it just one more minute and then we'll get started. Okay, again, thank you everybody for attending the webinar, which is about endpoint security and management tools provisioned on demand. We have uh, an interesting solution for endpoint security to discuss today. The panelists are myself, Greg Potabaum. I head up business development in Tulsa, Oklahoma, US. Chandra is the CEO of SecPod and Preeti, and Manish, which are both principal architects. So that will be the panelists today. Feel free to go ahead and, and ask any questions with the chat, and we'll follow up on, on those questions, most likely towards the end or at the end of the, the webinar. Just briefly, I'd like to mention uh, who SecPod is, and uh, we started back in 2008. We're headquartered in Bangalore, India. We have offices in the US in uh, Redwood City, California, as well as Tulsa, Oklahoma. We started a decade ago, back in 2008. And our main business at the time was uh, developing and providing an SCAP feed as an OEM service to major security vendors. SCAP feed has security checks for vulnerabilities and other things. And uh, companies like Alien Vault, Cloud Passage, Amazon, a number of other vendors use that. So we provide that as an OEM uh, feed to those companies. And then more recently, in 2015, we launched our SANER endpoint security scanning remediation compliance product. And what really differentiates uh, SANER is that it not only did vulnerability scans on a daily basis, but it also provided remediation patching capabilities and fixing compliance uh, configuration issues. So not only discovered problems and vulnerabilities, it allowed you to, to fix those problems. Now in 2018, we have a whole new approach. It's an extension of our SANER product. We call it SANER Now. And, um, that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to hand the presentation over to Chandra to get into that. Let me change the presenter here. Thank you, Greg. Good morning, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining the webinar today. I guess we have uh, attendees from different regions, so good evening as well. Uh, 
All right, so make it. So the topic, as Greg mentioned, is provisioning your endpoint security and system management tools on demand. So that's our webinar topic today. Along with that, I'll try and answer some of the questions that have been uh, bugging endpoint security and system management space uh, recent times. So this is one of the main challenge or the problems that organizations and enterprises are facing today. There are a large number of products, but there's too little security. So along with the investment in, in, in all of these point products, there is little security that is coming out uh, as an effect of that. And if you ask any of the enterprise organizations, uh, security infrastructure management team, they tell us that there are too many products, but we are not actually getting the result out of that. And uh, footprint of each of these products is increasing with every release. And the products are becoming complex uh, with uh, new features getting added. The products are becoming bul bulky. Along with that, the cost of uh, the, the product procurement is also becoming high. When we, with, with new product, there is procurement cycle, there is learning cycle, there is a deployment cycle. So all of this adds to the complexity of acquiring these new products. And then there is a training and professional certification, et cetera. So that needs to be uh, gone through uh, to become familiar with the product and start effectively using that product in the organization. So after going through all of these investments, uh, to, so another statistics throws out that 60% of the product capabilities are not uh, used. Typically, they are not uh, uh, applied or applicable to uh, the problem uh, space. And products tend to be complex, not necessarily do what they promise. Vulnerability scanner, for example, was uh, very popular and continue to be popular uh, even now. Uh, the problem uh, with that is that there is no uh, remediation built into it. So the products are built with reporting only in mind, but there's no actual value. So the value of uh, value is only achieved when you have a, a fix in mind and when I can actually remediate those vulnerabilities that I discover. So most products are created without a response strategy in mind or a fix in mind. And uh, along with that, the, the security concerns continue to remain uh, because of this challenge. And there is also a cost factor. So the, the gap between procuring the devices versus uh, managing these devices is increasing uh, multiple folds each year. And there is a cost for learning, professional certification, and training, as I said, which is also adding up to, to the cost factor. So in spite of these uh, uh, challenges that organizations face, uh, the, the security attacks continue to be there, and uh, system management concerns are continuing to be there. On the other hand, so building computing infrastructure has become significantly easier uh, over the last decade or so. Virtualization and cloud has helped tremendously, and infrastructure cost has also come down, I believe. And uh, you can almost sign up and set up a data center in a matter of a few hours to days. And, uh, and that is thanks to AWS and some of the, the cloud infrastructure providers uh, that are there. Likewise, uh, we need a similar approach for managing and securing the devices. And uh, as you know, sales and marketing automation, there is a, a solution there. There is service automation, there is a solution there. But there is none that exists for endpoint security and system management along the same line as uh, Amazon's uh, AWS. So that is the gap that we are trying to fill with Sainer now. So there should be a platform where I sign up, which provides all the tool sets required for managing and securing the devices. And Sena now is that platform. As we all know, security is a process. It's not a product. So it's not a commodity. So I need to understand the system architecture, 
need some amount of thinking, planning, etc. And then only I should be able to apply the tools or configure the tools to take care of different scenarios. And our platform essentially provides the tools that are necessary to, to manage and securing the, the devices. So this is our SaaS platform, platform architecture. It hosts array of tools for managing and uh, securing the devices. And it, you can provision the tools of your choice. So if you're looking at a particular, addressing a particular business scenario, so you can subscribe to that particular tool only. And you don't have to upfront decide the total number of licenses needed, et cetera. So you can uh, start deploying the, the, the endpoint licenses and uh, you can grow or uh, bring down the count as you wish. So that is the flexibility that, that you have with our platform. And of course, pay for only for the actual use of tools as Agnes deciding upfront how many licenses or how many subscriptions are need. So with that, uh, we will be able to reduce the, the IT management cost significantly. So the platform comes with these capabilities or the feature sets. So with single agent, uh, you can address multiple use cases. So we have six different uh, tools to address six different business use cases. All of that is through a single agent that needs to be installed on the endpoint systems. As you know, so the, the problem with the, the point products is like every new product brings its own agent. So typically in an organization, you have five to six different agents that are deployed to address these scenarios and which is addressed with one single agent. The agents are having a continuous monitoring capability. So the SENA platform as a whole is built with uh, continuous monitoring uh, uh, ability. It also has a response or self-healing capability. So it's not just about reporting the issues that are there, but actually you can go ahead and take those responses to mitigate those issues. The platform or the agent itself is uh, built to perform at a greater speed. So it can scan in less than five minutes across thousands of endpoints or irrespective of the number of endpoints that you have. The platform is built with or architectured for multi-tenancy and uh, you can create uh, multiple users and it has role-based access. We also have uh, API level integration. So anybody could uh, pull out the data or, or uh, command the platform to perform some activity. So coming to the tools, so we have six tools, as I said. So vulnerability scanner. So it, it runs a scan on a daily basis. Scan typically takes about five minutes to identify all the vulnerabilities in the operating systems and third party applications uh, installed on these different systems. Of course, after knowing the vulnerability, it's about mitigating those. So we have a patch management tool as well. So this helps fix the, the or apply the patches on operating system patches as well as third party applications. So we support Windows, Mac and Linux operating systems and a large number of third party applications as well. Then we have an asset management tools. The primary purpose of this tool is to gather inventory operating systems, devices, hardware devices, and software applications that are there in the organization. In addition to that, it also helps manage the, the software licenses and also understand if the assets or the investment that have gone into procuring these software licenses are being utilized effectively or not. And then we have an endpoint management tool primary purpose of this is to provide visibility to what is going on on the endpoints and if there is an issue taken a, a remediation action. So a typical example could be if my antivirus service is installed, updated and running, so we have a visibility there and if it is not, you can go ahead and start those services. 
And there are a large number of such visibility and uh, actions that are built into the endpoint management tool. And then we have compliance management tool. So this helps achieve regulatory compl uh, compliance to some of the regulatory benchmarks like the PCI uh, and the HIPAA and the NIST, some of the NIST standards as well. And then finally, we have an EDR tool, an endpoint threat detection and response tool, helps detect indicators of attack and indicators of compromise. And again, response is built into this tool as well, so where you can actually, uh, in real time, apply the response strategy. So those are the tools that we have today. And uh, these are the devices that we currently support, Windows, all the Microsoft uh, operating systems, all major versions or distributions of Linux uh, uh, systems and Mac OS X as well. And going forward, we are continuing to build new tools into the platform. One of the things that we are currently working on is network-based vulnerability scanning to identify vulnerabilities in switches, routers, and other IP-enabled devices. We are also working on a remote control uh, or a remote desktop sharing capability. So that would uh, act as a replacement for today's RMM uh, systems. There are other uh, tools that are in the pipeline on the product roadmap uh, for us that we will continue to build into it. We are also looking at uh, adding mobile devices and other IoT devices into scope apart from the, the Windows, Mac and Linux that we support today. So this is our roadmap going forward. So Sena now is a platform that provides large number of tools for you to subscribe and uh, provision and start using those tools as a nest, procuring these point products and, uh, and all the complexity and the costs that, that are associated with those products. So it's live on sanernow.com. So as a next step, I will be doing a quick demo of uh, this platform. So there is a try for free. So for anyone to go ahead and try it out. So all that you'll have to fill in a couple of information. There is a getting started guide to help you go through some of the steps. So, and you can provision the, the tools that you're interested in. So there are different tools like vulnerability management, patch management, etc., that you can activate for your services. And then you you'll have to create an account or a site for deployment and start deploying the agents. So for this demo, I have uh, performed all these steps just to keep it simple. There's one last step, which is to deploy the agents. I'm going to start from that particular uh, stage. So once signed up, you, this is our uh, billing and service management portal. If you click on the CNR platform, that will take you into our platform page. As I said, I've performed all the other steps and I'm at the, the agent deployment stage. I'm gonna share it with the uh, to download the agent and deploy it on uh, a couple of Windows and a Mac system. So the agent, uh, we have different uh, deployment uh, capabilities. So this can be deployed with a command line uh, interface that we have in a silent mode can also use our deployer tool, which is again a command line tool that you can uh, deploy it across the enterprise network. Alternatively, you can also push it through any of the software deployment tool that is 
already there inside the organization or through an Active Directory GPO policy as well. So we have instructions for each of these uh, different deployment methods. Should take a, a minute or so to complete the installation step. Post that uh, an agent runs, all the installed agents run scan, and the scan should typically take about three to four minutes to complete it. Looks like we already deployed, and uh, some of those agents are performing the scan. So we install it on three system, one Windows and uh, two Mac OS X system. We can see the device detail here. These are the three systems where it is installed. So status bar here. As part of the initial installation, they run an update to pull the latest vulnerability and threat intelligence data from the server. Post that, they'll run a scan. So while the scan exercise is going on, I can show you a couple of other capabilities. So you can create multiple sites to manage them. So this is a multi-tenant uh, architecture, so you can switch between different sites by once you have uh, other sites created. You can also create multiple users and uh, make them responsible for managing different sites or accounts that we will create. We have settings to control the behavior of the agents, like what time they should run the scan and uh, other configuration information related to remediation, etc. We have uh, a lot of built-in reports available that you can export it into a PDF or send out an email. You can also configure an automated uh, backup. As part of the backup, an email will also be sent. We have alerts, any email-based alerts that you can subscribe to. And we have audit logs to monitor who did what what is going on in, in each of these sites. So once the agents perform the scan, all of this data will be 
populated from all the tools that I have provisioned for this particular site. So you can provision the tools for every site that we'll create. So if you want to remove EDR, for example, just add on select it and save that. like one of the system completed the update and it should run a scan and finish the scan in a couple of minutes or so. Scan started on these two systems. These agents, once they are deployed, are automatically grouped based on the operating system they are installed with. You can also create your own group uh, based on certain criteria like the IP address, host name, etc. So it can also be based on the functional grouping of the organization. So those devices will be automatically moved into the new group. And, uh, any of the settings and the configurations that are applied will, will be based on the individual groups that are created. We have a two-factor authentication, so which can enable and pair with the Google Authenticator app works on Android and uh, iOS devices. Looks like one of the system finished the scanning. The other two are still running the scan, so we should be able to see some data right now. So this is the overview from the endpoint management tool. The asset management tool says 300 plus applications are not used. This is the vulnerability statistics from that one system. It has 104 vulnerabilities. And patch management says we just need to apply these four patches to fix all of those 100 plus vulnerabilities that are there. We also have a default compliance benchmark that was created and a large number of settings are non-compliant. And we have uh, fixes available to fix those deviations. The EDR tool so far has not detected any issue. Okay, looks like all of them completed. So you should see more information. It has 352 vulnerabilities from all those three systems. And we did see indicators of attack at two of them. So this is just an overview from each of the tool. We have the tools here. Each of them have highly powerful dashboard. So if you go into vulnerability management, 352 vulnerability, and this is the criticality distribution. And the vulnerability is also distributed based on the CVSS score. It's a way of rating the vulnerabilities. It says 45% of those vulnerabilities are easily exploitable. And publicly available exploits is about 8%. And a good number of uh, these vulnerabilities are network exploitable. And again, another 40 plus percent of the vulnerabilities have high lateral movement, which means that if an, if an attack takes place, it can spread from one system to another system easily. 
we also categorize these uh, additional information from the vulnerability intelligence point of view. 33% of these vulnerabilities can be exploited with a black hole exploit. And you can see details about that particular exploit kit and which vulnerabilities are being used by this exploit kit. It also has a patching, what patch needs to be installed to fix that particular problem. So we have other details uh, as well from the vulnerability management point of view. It also lists all the patches that need to be applied to fix these vulnerabilities. Switching to patch management tool from the vulnerabilities. So these are all the patches that need to be applied. And their distribution by operating system, vendor, etc. So fixing the patch is fairly simple. Just need to select the application that you want to patch. and fix those application by providing a name and uh, when you would like to apply the patch. After that, you'll be able to monitor the status of the patching exercise by clicking on status window here. We also can remediate the configuration issues. Configuration issues are hardening checks that can be performed to create a better security posture of the devices. We also have a rollback capability if a patch needs to be uninstalled for some reason, if it is not working out well for a system, so you can uninstall those. There are also a way where you can automate the patching by creating a schedule. I guess I'm back now, so sorry, there were some network delays here. Moving to asset management tool. So the primary purpose is to provide inventory of the applications and the devices and the operating system. It can also be used for license management purposes. So we have, as part of the scanning exercise, detect all the licensed applications that are there in the organization and uh, it provides the license key information, etc. You can also feed And it also identifies the software utilization, whether the applications have been uh, used after investing in procuring these licensed devices. We also can blacklist and whitelist these applications from the reporting point of view. And if there are unsupported applications installed in the organizations, it will list those as well. Then we have an endpoint management tool. The primary purpose is the visibility to what is going on in each of these systems. 
So we have a large number of checks that are available to verify the status of each of the endpoints. I give an example of an endpoint protection software. So this checks identifies all the AVs that are installed and if the signature database is up to date and if the antivirus services are running and the endpoint protection status is enabled or not. You can also check the system status, whether they are healthy, like the utilization of RAM, CPU, and the disk space, etc. Along with that, we do have a large number of checks available for every family of operating system, the Windows, Linux, and Mac, and categorized according to network management, patch management, etc. So these are the checks that are available. So clicking on that fetches details related to DNS, for example, which you can export it into a CSV file. So the DNS server used and uh, other things like the wireless security, no information is available. Network interfaces identifies all the network interfaces, their IP address that are configured and the MAC address and all of that detail. So these are different checks that are there. And uh, we also have actions for each of these checks. So application and device control helps you block applications and also block uh, access to certain devices. These are all the devices that are there in the environment. We have a software deployment tool that will help uh, upload software applications and install them across all the selected group of systems. Likewise, we have other actions that can be performed like stopping a process or killing a process that is running, editing registry settings, services that can be stopped or started, some of the network settings that can be modified. It also has capabilities to reboot or shut down a system. There are a few other things uh, that are here. So one of the interesting uh, capability we have is uh, ability to link a check to an action. So for example, if you would want to ensure a particular service is always running, so you can check the status of that particular service and if it is not running, you can create an action to start that service. So these can be scheduled to run periodically and uh, ensuring the uptime of these services. Moving on to compliance management tool. So the primary purpose is to achieve compliance to some of the regulatory standards like PCA and HIPAA and NIST standards. So as part of the initial scan, we do uh, certain checks on the password policy, account lockout policy, etc. So here is the compliance status for each of those rules that are there part of the benchmark. You can also create benchmarks by using some of the templates that we have for each of these standards. PCA, for example, you can select that and edit. So these are the PCI benchmarks that we have. So you can customize each of these according to organization's requirement and then apply it to a group of devices that need to be evaluated for that benchmark. Once the scan is done, you will see the results for PCA compliance in this window. In addition to that, we have remediation actions as well for each of these deviations. So if you want to, want to fix those deviations, you can use the ability to remediate those as well by selecting any of those that are in deviation and fix those issues. So the last tool is the EDR tool. It helps detect indicators of attack and indicators of compromise. So it did identify a few of these issues like firewall is disabled. There is an executable that is there in a non-standard location. 
UAC is turned off, etc. So we have a good number of these rules that can identify potential indicators of attack. We also have a threat intelligence feed to detect indicators of compromise. And this tool has the flexibility where you can create your own rules, detection rules, to identify a potential attack pattern. Those are the tools that we have, and, uh, and this is the summary view from all of those tools. There is a high level view as well available. So if you have multiple sites, so this is an individual site view, but if you want to see a summary across all the different sites, this is where you go and you see the total data or stats coming from each of these tools which you can export it into a CSV file or use it and export the, the report for each of these sites separately. With that, I would like to conclude the, the demo part. Anybody has questions, feel free to send it out. We will go through each of them and answer those. Yeah, one of the question is, uh, is it available on uh, CentOS operating system? Yes, we do have support on uh, CentOS Red Hat and uh, Oracle Linux. Also some of the Debian and Ubuntu platforms as well. Yes, this is available on the uh, available as a SaaS hosted on an AWS environment. If an organization is looking at uh, installing it on on-premise, so we do have a, a solution for on-premise deployments as well. Do we have an MDM service? No, so we do not support mobile devices as of now. That is something that we have uh, in the roadmap for this year. So we will have all those capabilities added into the platform. So the Cisco and uh, Checkpoint products mainly target on the network security aspects of it. So our product is primarily focusing on the endpoint security. Cisco does have an endpoint security uh, tool as well that primarily focusing on the EDR only. So our difference is that we do have uh, tools covering different uh, uh, use cases apart from the EDR. Right, I think those were the questions. Thank you once again to all of you for joining this webinar. Hope you found it useful. Feel free to try out our, our tool by creating an account for, for you. So it has a one month uh, trial account that you can deploy it on 
10 different uh, agents or endpoint systems. Also, if you want to set up a call or anything, just uh, send an email to info at secpod.com. And as Chandra said, you can go in and, and simply sign up, try it for free. It's a simple process. So unless, uh, Chandra, unless you have something else, I think that uh, probably wrap up. Yes. Yeah, that should be good. Thank you very much once again to all of you for joining the webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to write to us at info.sacport.com. Thank you again.